Hi guys, this is Frenchy, and I received a ton of comments asking me about Gamma, especially with Rec 709A. In my college career, I put my hair so much out of my scope trying to understand Gamma and trying to understand what to put as an output Gamma. And also the super, super, super big question I always ask myself because I own a Mac, should I use Rec 709A? I have made a video about it in the past, I just find the information that I'm giving are a bit misleading and I want to clarify everything. So let's go to the basics. So REC 709 is the standard developed by the International Telecommunication Union for image encoding. It is a common language used by majority of the displays and it is the process of interpretation of an image from the camera to a display. REC 709 is tinier than most color spaces. And by this, it's making sure that any images shot by any camera can be viewed on displays. Before we are going to talk about REC 709A, it is good to point out two standards that are going to be useful to answer our question of, should I use REC 709A? The ITU BT709, which is an equivalent of REC 709 uh, where the gamma curve is not tagged, and the ITU BT1886, that is the equivalent of REC 709 plus a 2.4 gamma curve. So, also, because we are talking about gamma curve, what is a gamma? Gamma is a mathematical way of quantifying contrast on the display. Here are all the gammas that are useful in our industry. The gamma 2.6 is for cinema, the gamma 2.4 is for TV, and the gamma 2.2 is for every devices that are laptop, phone, etc. outside of TV. Here is an example of different gammas and you can see that the contrast is moving in function of each gamma. Bigger the number will be, more contrasty the image will be. The choice of gamma for a display will be mainly done by choosing in which environment the screen will be the most dead at. Dimmer the viewing experience will be, more contrast the gamma will have. This is why historically uh, commercial colorists are outputting in Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 because when it's about a commercial, it will be broadcasted on TV. That's why you have a lot of tutorials on YouTube that will ask you to put your output color space in Rec 709 Gamma 2.4, because historically, this is our industry standard. So now that we covered Gamma, I think it's good to also understand why our colors are shifting on a Mac. First of all, if you are outputting in Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 and you are watching your video in another device than TV, like for example, laptop or uh, phone, you will have this feeling of lifted contrast anyway because it needs to fit the gamma curve of 2.2. But Macs have another very particular way to deal with color. So on your Mac, the video out of DaVinci is not played as a Rec 709 Gamma 2.2 as a regular um, laptop would do. The video is displayed using a non-standard value of Gamma 1.96, which is basically a Gamma that is very close to 2.0. So why is this happening? The culprit is the color sync utility. Color sync utility will translate your gamma to a gamma that is 1.96. Then because we are going to a gamma that is having less contrast than even gamma 2.2, then that's why you feel that your shadows are really washed up. And the bad news is that color sync is in almost all the application of your Mac. It concerns QuickTime Player, QuickView, Safari, Preview, etc, etc. So my advice, uh, don't use QuickTime. <laughs> and this is what is misleading you guys because you are seeing the gamma shift in all these applications and uh, you then trust that there is something wrong with your export where actually there is nothing wrong with it. It's just color sync that is getting the gamma wrong. So then the big, big, big question of the video, which is should I use Rec 709A? So REC 709A is a specialized color space in DaVinci Resolve. This color space have been imagined to compensate the inconsistency between Apple and non-Apple workflow. To be simple, it adapts 
the gamma curve, uh, especially in the shadows and highlights, for it to avoid um, the gamma shift that you can have in your Apple workflow. DaVinci Resolve will render the video with a tag of 111, which is BT709, to tell QuickTime Player how to interpret it. But it is possible that outside of QuickTime Player, other application would interpret this video with a tag of 121, which is essentially interpreted in BT1886. The problem is that if you interpret inaccurately a Rec. 709 footage with uh, the tag BT1886, it could have pretty bad repercussion to your footage, especially in the shadow details. This is because Rec. 709A and BT1886 have different mathematic ways to interpret light characteristics. If you want to fall down the rabbit hole, I put you all my sources in the description. So after all this, should you use Rec. 709A in your workflow? My answer is no, but for me, you shouldn't use Rec. 709A as your output color space for delivery. Why? It's because you can't control at all how your video is going to be viewed in the wide and also you want to avoid as much as possible gamma issues. So my advice is to set your output color space in Rec. 709 Gamma 2.2 when you know that the delivery will be viewed on the internet where then you are sure that most of the devices that's going to play your video is laptop and phones and export in Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 when your delivery is at destination of TVs. Also, calibrate your external grading monitor to Gamma 2.4 or uh, if you have more delivery in Gamma 2.2, then in Gamma 2.2. And also calibrate your Mac screen even if you are just using it for the UI because I don't want you to compare uh, your image on the UI and your grading monitor. Even if you tell yourself that you won't compare, I'm sure you're going to compare anyway. So um, please, calibrate your Mac screen. You can buy a calibrator to calibrate your screens. I advise you the Calibrate Display Pro, which is very prosumer, not super expensive, and uh, it put the colors in the right place. Um, also, if you want to be a bit more fancy, but then it costs a bit more money, uh, there's the Portrait Display uh, by Kalman. And uh, of course, there you are sure that your screen is gonna be really well calibrated. If you are working on the Mac, even if you are only using it for the UI, um, I recommend you to enable use Mac Display Color Profiles uh, because it will give you the accurate colors uh, in your UI. Um, you can access it by the preferences in user. Here's my butt on Rec. 709A and uh, this is my thought on it. There is only one scenario for me where you can use Rec. 709A. The scenario is when you are sending previews to the client. If you know that your client will review your color opening QuickTime Player, then you can export in Rec. 709A for them to have the best experience possible. But this should only stay for preview stage, not for color delivery. Because as I say earlier, we want to avoid all the problems possible that can occur with the gamma. So I hope it was clear enough. If you want to inform yourself a bit more about uh, gamma and how the Rec. 709A is uh, reacting uh, with uh, the BT709 and the BT1886, um, I put you the link of my sources in the description. Uh, it's a good read. I think it's going to be good for you. And whew, that was a lot of info. I let you process this for a bit. I'm going to go back to Pet Patat. I hope it helped and you enjoyed the video. See you next time, guys.